Hi students, welcome back. We are starting with a new topic, ratio. First, let's read the definition. The ratio of two quantities of the same kind in the same units is the fraction that one quantity is of the other. What do I mean by this? First, let's understand what is ratio. For example, if I take 5 is to 3, how do I say this? 5 is to 3. Children, also understand, 5 is to 3 also means 5 upon 3. And this also means when I divide 5 divided by 3. So by now I am sure you have understood what is ratio. This is 5 is to 3 is how you put it in the form of a ratio. How do you say it? 5 is to 3 which also means 5 upon 3. You can also divide it as this way. 5 divided by 3. Now, suppose if I have say 25 is to 15. Now, remember since this also means 25 upon 15. You know you have to reduce it in your simplest form. You need not do it this way and reduce. Directly you know the table of 5 goes here. So 5, 5 to 25, 5 threes are 15. So I'm sure you have understood what is ratio. Now, if I have 5 is to 3, 5 is my first term and you call it antecedent. Alright, this is your first term and it is called antecedent. 3 is your second term and we call it consequent. Alright, let me repeat. First term, antecedent. Second term, consequent. Now, let's go to some other examples. Now, let's check this. Now, let me read the definition again. The ratio of two quantities of the same kind. Now, here, I have years, I have years. So, these have the same kind. Children, you cannot have two different units. Like, let's also compare here. I have another example. 75 grams, 1 kg. The units are different. When the units or the kind is different, then you cannot reduce. You will have to make it or bring it to the same kind or unit and only then you can do your or reduce your ratio. Now here, both are in years. So that's fine. So this is 18 is to 24. So you know your tables. 3, 6 are 18. 3, 8 are 2. 3 is a 6, 2 4 is a 8. So my ratio is 3 is to 4. Now here, 75 grams is to 1 kg. Now this unit is different. Let's make both the same unit. Gram is to gram. So I have 75 is to 1 kg is how many grams? Yes, 1 kg is 1000 grams. You know your tables of 5. 5 1s are 5, 6 7. 5 5s are 25. 5 2s are 10, 0 0. 5 3s are 15, 5 4s are 20, 0. 3 is to 40. By now, I'm sure you've understood what are ratios. Let's just brush up. Now I've told you, whenever you do ratios, they need to be in the same kind or same unit. Right? Ratios can also be put in the form of a fraction. Like for example, I have 3 is to 4. You know this also means 
3 upon 4. This is your first term and it is called right antecedent. 4 will be your second term and that's called as consequent. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay, now I have another set of examples for you. Let's read the question first. Express each of the following ratio in the simplest form. So again, what you're doing is you need to bring these ratios in the simplest form. You had two whole numbers there, right? Now here we have fractions. And 1 upon 6 is to 1 upon 9. And here 4 and a half is to 1, 1 upon 8. Now, first let's see this example. 6 and 9. When you are doing your fractions, when the denominators are different, what do we do? Yes, we take the LCM. So 6 and 9. 3, 2 is a 6, 3, 3 is a 9. 2 goes 1 time. 3, 3 1 is a 3. 3 ones are 3. So 3 2 is a 6. 6 3 is a 18. So my LCM is 18. Now 6 goes how many times children and 18? 6 goes 3 times. 9 goes 2 times. Correct? So now I have 3 upon 18 is to 2 upon 18. Now children be careful. Now, 3 upon 18 is to 2 upon 18. Since both my denominators are same, I ignore these. So, what answer do I get? 3 is to 2. Now, you might ask me, why did I cancel them? Or why did I say ignore them? Now, let's go back. When I told you <coughs> about two ratios, what did I say? They can also be put in the division form, right? So, what does this mean? 3 upon 18 is to becomes divided by 2 upon 18. 2 upon 18. Correct? Have you all understood? Ratio means upon also. So, now, when I simplify this, 3 upon 18 the y becomes multiply. 2 upon 18 becomes reciprocal. 18 upon 2. Correct? Alright. 18 goes one time. 18 goes one time. So what do I get? 3 upon 2. I have told you. 3 upon 2 also means 3 is to 2. So let's leave it. You children, you don't need to do this. This was just for you to understand as to why I've told you in ratios to ignore the, this, uh, the denominators once you know we have made it same or equal. I hope I'm clear. Now let's, let's move on to the next example. Now this is in a mixed fraction. So let's convert. 2 fours are 8 plus 1. 9 upon 2 is 2, 8, 1 is 8 plus 1, 9 upon 8. Denominators are different, so I need to take my LCM. 2 and 8, 2 ones are 2, 2 fours are 8. Nothing common, so let me take directly 4 ones are 4 ones are. So you know your LCM is 8. Now 2 goes how many times? 2 goes 4 times. 8 goes 1 time. So, what do I get? 9 fours are 36 upon 8. This to 9 upon 8. What did I say? When your denominators are same, cancel them. What am I left with? 36 is to 9. I can reduce this. So, it is 9 ones are 9. 9 fours are 36. So what's my ratio? 4 is to 1. I hope you've understood. Let's move on to some more different examples. One more example. Let's go to 8 months is to 1 
two third year. Now, month and year units are different. So first, I need to make both into months. I know here it is eight because it is eight months. Now here I have one and two third year children. One year and two third year. Now I know one year is how many months? One year is twelve months, right? One year has twelve months. What are your months? January, February, March till December. So your know, one year is twelve months. So let me put twelve plus. I have two third of a year. So that means two third of a year. So in one year, how many months? One year has twelve months. So when I reduce, I get three ones are three. Three fours are twelve. So two fours are eight months. So let me add that eight months. So one two third year is equal to in total how many months? Twelve plus eight gives me twenty months. So let me write it here as eight is to twenty. I hope you all have understood. Remember, one year twelve months. Two third of a year two upon three multiplied by twelve. So now I have made. Both my units same, or both the quantities are sorry, not the units. Both the quantities become the same. Eight is to twenty. I don't finish it here. I need to reduce. I know it is four twos are eight, four fives are twenty. So I hope you have understood. Let's move on to another question. Now let's read this question. Another example. Divide. Rupees three thousand four hundred between A and B in the ratio six is to eleven. What do I mean by that? There are two people. There is A and there is B. There is the total amount. What I have is three thousand four hundred. Now I need to divide this between A and B in the ratio of six is to eleven. Means Six parts of three thousand four hundred goes to A, and eleven parts of three thousand four hundred goes to B. Now, how do we do it? First, let's write total amount. What's the total amount? Yes, rupees three thousand four hundred. Right. Next, let's write the ratio. The given. Ratio. What is that? Six is to eleven. So remember, first for any question similar to this, you will write the total. Let it be total, total amount, or anything that is given. Total. Next, the ratio. Six is to eleven. Next, let's write total ratio or the sum of the ratio. Okay, total ratio or sum of the ratio. Six. Plus eleven, that is seventeen. Now, how do I distribute? So, amount A gets, okay, and amount B gets. All right. How do I do it? We take the ratio six upon the sum of the ratio seventeen into. Three thousand four hundred. How did we do it? Six the ratio upon the total sum of the ratio. So six upon seventeen into three thousand four hundred, and this becomes eleven upon seventeen into three thousand four hundred. Let's work it out in the rough column. I have six upon seventeen into Thirty-four zero zero. I know my tables. So seventeen ones are seventeen twos are zero zero. Six twos are twelve. So I get one two zero zero. Rupees one thousand two hundred and eleven upon seventeen into three thousand four hundred. So when I reduce seventeen 
2200. So now I have got my answers. This will be rupees 1200. Right? A gets rupees 1200. And B gets rupees 2200. Now let's see whether I've done it right or not. Let me add 2200 two, zero, zero, plus 1200. Zero, zero. So what did you get? 3400. See, we had to distribute this whole amount between the two. So this boy got 6 parts and this person got 11 parts. So please remember, whenever you're given a question like this, divide in the form of a ratio, then First, you will write total amount. Next, ratio. Then, total ratio. Then, what do we do? We take the ratio upon the sum of the ratio multiplied by the total. Likewise, you do it with the next ratio. Let's work out another example. Alright, now, a similar question, but just see. Divide rupees 7200 among ABC. That time we had 2, but now it's in the form of a fraction. Let me repeat. Divide rupees 7200 among A, B, and C in the ratio 1 upon 3 is to 1 upon 6 is to 1 upon 4. Now, I told you, how do we write? First thing is we put total amount. Right? So total amount is rupees 7200. 7, what do we write next? Ratio. Now, what I'm doing by ratio? This is in the form of a fraction. We need to convert. So now when we are doing our LCM, I've already done the LCM here, children. 3, 6, and 4. What do I get? 3, 2, 6, 6, 2, 0. 12. Now, 3 goes how many times? 3, 4, zero. Right? 6 goes 2 times. And 4 goes 3 times. So I get 4 upon 12 is to 2 upon 12 is to 3 upon 12. I said, ignore your denominators. So what do I get? 4 is to 2 is to 3. Then what do we do? Total ratio or sum of the ratio. Sum of the ratio. When I do sum, what do I do? Sum means add. So 4 plus 2 plus 3. So 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. Correct? Now, we have to divide it among A, B and C. So, what do I do? Amount A gets. Correct? And amount B gets. And then amount C gets. Alright? Now, let's work it out. How do we do it? A. What do I do? So this is, let's make a note children. This is for A, this is for B and this is for C. You can never change the order. You have to go in the same order. So it is 4 upon 9 into 7200. Correct? Then 2 upon 9 into 7200. Correct? And then 3 upon 9 into 7200. So 4 upon 9 into 7200. Your tables, let's reduce 9 1's a 9, 9 8's a 7200, 8 4's a 32, 3 
two zero zero. Right? Then I have two upon nine into seven two zero zero. Nothing changes here. So nine ones are nine eight. Correct? You have already reduced your children, so you know eight two is sixteen one six zero zero. And then I have three upon nine into seven two zero zero. When I reduce nine. Three eights are twenty-four zero zero. Correct? So A gets rupees three thousand two hundred. B gets rupees one six zero zero. And C gets rupees two four zero zero. How do I check if my answer is right? Add all the three. And when you add all the three, your answer should be equal to seven thousand two hundred. Let's move on to the next example. Children, this I have taken from your exercise seven a, question twenty two. Which ratio is greater, three is to four or five is to seven? Now you know three is to four also means three upon four, correct? Okay? And five is to seven means Five upon seven, so three upon four, five upon seven. Nothing common. Let me take the LCM. Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four goes how many times? Four goes seven times. Seven goes four times. Three sevens are twenty-one. Five fours are twenty. So you know which is greater. Which is that? Three upon four is greater, isn't it? So now, if I ask you, which ratio is greater? Three is to four is greater than five is to seven. Clear? Now, children, take out your textbooks and from exercise seven a, I've already worked out a few examples for you. So you can do question one, question two, question three. All right. You can also solve question four, five, and six, and the and question seven and eight. Please read the remaining. I will work it out in the next video for you. All right. And you can also do question twenty-two because I've done one of this. With this, let me wind up. Once you finish or you have any doubts, you can come back to me. Bye.